Both Koreas have been at war since the 1950s. With the Korean War ending with a ceasefire. With no peace treaty ever signed, multiple border skirmishes have occurred ever since. How would a Korean War in the 21st century look like? In this video, I will discuss that. Badger Squad, the North Koreans have invaded the city and are pushing towards your position. Watch out for fire teams in your AO. Copy that. Keep your eyes open, team. The Korean People's Army is the fourth largest in the world, with 1.2 million active personnel and 600,000 reserve personnel. North Korean conscription requires male and female citizens to serve 10 years in the armed forces. Republic of Korea armed forces, ranked sixth most powerful military in the world, has half a million active personnel and 2.7 million reserve personnel. South Korean conscription requires male citizens to serve in the armed forces between 18 to 22 months based on service branches. During the initial phase, North Korea would likely go on the offensive. North Korean special forces are trained to infiltrate South Korea by sea, air and land to carry out sabotage, such as terror attacks using chemical and biological weapons. It is estimated that North Korea has a stockpile of 2,500 to 5,000 tons of chemical and biological weapons. Although South Korean intelligence is capable, it is simply impossible to stop all terror attacks. South Korean special forces would be deployed to infiltrate North Korean nuclear facilities to disable their weapons of mass destruction. North Korea would unleash their ballistic missiles and artillery on South Korea. South Korean anti-missile system would help deal with missile threats but could be overwhelmed. Major cities such as Seoul located close to the border would be devastated even with just conventional warheads. Civilian casualties will be high as time will be needed to evacuate civilians further south. South Korea would also retaliate with its own missiles and artillery fire. The air war would favor the South Koreans, as most of North Korean combat aircraft are outdated. North Korean pilots also lack flying experience. With air superiority established, the South Korean Air Force would begin targeting North Korean ground forces. The overall better reconnaissance capability of South Korea allows better detection and targeting of North Korean ground targets. North Korea do, however, have some air defense capability. During the Gulf War air campaign, 2,700 coalition aircraft was deployed. Only 52 was lost to the Iraqis. This gives us an attrition rate of 0.0187. The South Korean Air Force would probably experience similar attrition rate on the naval front, the South Korean Navy have an edge as their vessels are more modern and have long-range targeting. North Korea's Navy is also known as the Brown Water Navy as most of their vessels are only suited for coastal operations.
before the ground war can begin. Both sides have to first deal with the DMZ. The DMZ is a strip of land that divides both Koreas, heavily fortified with barbed wires, fencing and about 2 million landmines. Similar to the air and naval fronts, the ground forces of South Korea are better equipped as a whole and at individual soldier level. Having air and naval support also allows South Korean forces to outmaneuver and outflank North Korean forces. While South Korean soldiers has been deployed for UN peacekeeping missions, North Korean soldiers has never seen combat since the Korean War in the 1950s. Additionally, troops also rely heavily on logistical supplies such as food and ammunition. While South Korea have a strong purchasing power, 어, North Korea's army could see high desertion rates like during the Gulf War. North Korea would be tempted to use its nuclear weapons. But a nuclear strike would certainly involve the United States and United Nations, which could escalate into a World War III should China or Russia get involved.